you know, let's figure out if this thing is uh, linear. Because if it is, we'll find the constant rate of change. What's another name for rate of change? Slope. 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 Very good. What letter do we use for slope? S. M. But slope starts with the S. It's the Greek word for slope. Okay. All right. Well, let's look. Uh, let's. Uh, so X is on the left. Y is on the right. Bam. Okay. So let's look at the change in Y. This one is up 20. 20. So I'm going to make this a fraction of up 20. Yeah. Divided by change in X, which is up 2, 2. Yeah. If we were to simplify this fraction, what would we get? Yeah. Okay. Let's check the next one. Which so one goes? Equals 10. Yes. There yeah, you go. guessed it. This next one, it goes up 30. No, it goes up 20. That's what I meant. Thank you. 20. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> Way to be, Christian. Up 20. This one is up 2. Are they the same? Are they equal yeah. fractions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, they be. Okay. Let's check this last one. It goes up 20. Up 2. What was that? Uh, here. Are these equal fractions? Yes. yes, yes they are. So is this linear? Yeah. yeah. You can simplify it. It's proportional. Linear. What's the rate of change? 10. 10. All right. Now, since this is a rate, we really should actually label this. Uh, and it would be the y's over the x's, so it's ten dollars per hour. Yes, Oyer. Let's finish this, okay? <laughs> All right, let's look at the changes on this next one. Uh, let's check uh, this first one. Of course, this is x again. This is y. So my change in y in this part is plus ten. So I indicate that with a positive 10. The change in x is plus 5. So if this were simplified, it would be 2, right? All right, let's check the next one. This is up 90. So I've got 90. And this next change is in 5. So are these fractions equal? No, no they are not. So we would definitely say this not. one. What do you mean it's not linear? It's not linear. It's not linear. It's not uh, the same. It's not like a pattern. It's just randomized. Oh, I didn't look at that. All right, there's the homework. All right, uh, just so you guys know, and this is important for you guys to know, that uh, x values are always the independent variable, mean, variable meaning it's, it's by itself. It's independent, okay? It doesn't depend on anything. It's going to happen whether the other thing happens or not. And usually this is a form of time, okay? So in other words, you'll see some forms of time, like seconds or minutes, or hours, or days, or weeks, or month, or year, or decade, or a century, or a millennia. Sure. I don't know if there's anything past millennia, but let's say light year, okay? All right, if you see this, these forms of time automatically, just know that it are x, okay? Y values are dependent, which is why you have something like miles per hour. Miles depends on how many hours have passed, because it's speed. So it's x. All right, I know some of you BYU fans are thinking not in terms of speed, but speed, okay? Your backpack. It's in your backpack. Anyways, you don't have to understand that. 
Y values are always the dependent variables, okay? I don't get it. You don't have to. It's in my backpack. Yes, it's in your backpack. What's in his backpack? The drugs? The bomb. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Can I have some? Okay. Uh, look, uh, here's some... Here's some... Uh, look at a label or situation as if one depends on the other, okay? So, for example, you say, does the number of laps depend on the amount of time? Yes. Well, yes. How many laps you run depends on how much time has passed. Uh, does the number of home runs depend on the number of games? Yes. yes. Well, yes. If you hit a, n a certain number of home runs per game, then, yes, the number of home runs depends on the number of games. Okay? Now, listen, uh, this is an important part for you guys because you'll always see something like uh, miles per hour. What this does is it tells you which one is x and which one is y. The dependent variable is represented by which, x or y? x. x. I'm sorry, y. Yes, y. Yeah, good save. For independent variable, which is x. Okay, so in other words, miles is x, hours is y. So just by looking at the labels, we can determine if something is dependent or independent, okay? Wait. So again, it's dependent per independent, so y per x. All right, so let's look at some other variations of rates that you might see, okay? Such as, hmm, uh, well, we did miles per hour, didn't we? Let's do eggs per cookie. No, you should do eggs per Okay. So since we know it's eggs and cookies that we're comparing, which of these two would be the X value? Eggs. The cookies. Because it's Y per X. X would be Y, cookies would be X. X depends on how many cookies we want to make. Or that already exists. Okay? So let's look at another example. Okay? Uh, let's do this one. Unicorns. <laughs> per. I don't know if I spelled this right, and I don't really care. Because neither actually exist. Okay? But if you stop like this. Which one would be the dependent? Which one would be dependent? Unicorns. The unicorns are dependent Yay. upon the leprechauns. I don't know what you said. That is correct. Okay. So like Olivia was just saying, once you see this word per, like what cats do, it's the first one. It's the one after that. All right. Let's talk about proportionality, all right? Proportionality. Okay, good. There are two things you need for proportionality. Oh, I know, I know. What is the first thing that you absolutely positively must have? Dawson. Linear. It must be linear, okay? Linear also means that it is a straight line. Very good. All right, what is the second thing that you need? Cooper. It has to go through the origin. Has to go through the origin. Very good. Through the origin. All right, well, this is math, right? So it can't be that straightforward. So now it is time to confuse you, all right? So, okay, so this is the most confusing part is we call this proportionality, right? Well, there's other names for it, such as a direct variation. All right. Now, in addition to this, if it is a direct variation, it's going to ask for the slope, but it will not call it slope. It's going to call it... No, 
It's... 809. M. No. Rise well done. Just got sure. All right. So, yeah, it looks like it is called the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. Those are the same as slope. Okay. We're more commonly going to call it slope, not rate of change. But there's a poster, just in case. The amount of money David can raise for the wish upon a rainbow bikeathon is shown in the table. Recall that when the ratio of two variable quantities is constant, a proportional relationship exists. The relationship is called direct variation. No Actually, we do need to address this. So if we look at this uh, problem right here, we have to determine if it is a, di a direct variation. If we want to know if it's a direct variation, we don't need to find if it's linear first. We can do both at the same time. And we went over this already. Does anyone remember? How to find out if it is a direct variation or if it's proportional, because they're the same thing. Yes, Yoni? If it's linear. Uh, no, that would not tell if it's, it's proportional. Oh, oh. It does have to be linear for proportional, though, OK? Oh, uh, well, yeah, no, not this graph. No, I'm looking at the table. So this will ask, answer Christian's question on how do we know from a table if it is proportional, OK? Oh, put your hand down. All right, so let's look. Uh, what we're going to do is notice it told us this is x, and it told us that this is y. So biking time, it'd be dollars per, in this case, hours, I guess. So what we got is we need to make these fractions all right, and see if they are equal. And what we're going to do is make these as though they were slope. So... I'm just going to take the y value, not the change in y, just the actual y value, which in this case is 20. It was 20 until I crossed it out. And we're going to divide that by the x value, which is 2. two. All I need to do is find if this is equal to the next set, which would be 40 divided by... Four. Are those two fractions equal? Yes. yes. Now we do need to check on the third one. So are these equal to the 60 divided by the 6? Yes. yes, these are all equal. Right away, I already know that it is actually proportional. Done. OK. So if we look at this, complete the steps below. Yeah, you can find the slope if you want, but it's not necessary. All right. Uh, on a graph, how can we tell if it is proportional? Yeah, Grant. Straight goes to the origin. Well, this line looks pretty straight to me. And it looks like it goes to the origin. Check. It's proportional. All right. Uh, also, this is, this is just a bunch of garbage here. If you guys are writing an equation for proportion, you need to know. The equation. Equation for proportionality. Okay? The equation for proportionality is y equals whatever you find the slope to be, times x. Done. That's it. What? So if we look on that previous example, the slope actually was 10. So the this, this equation for that would be y equals 10x. Done. All right, so you can see on this one, uh, M is slope in this case, because M represents slope. And also, they've got our equation down here, which is very, very nice. All right. Here's an example. Nope. This is just telling you direct variation is straight, and it goes to the origin. OK. Go. Maybe that's good for you guys to see, is the slope. Notice, uh, let's actually look at an example. Let's say that we need to write the equation from this table. So this is our table right up in here. All right, so what are we, what two things are we comparing here? Y and 
Oh, yeah, wide. but what two things do you guys want to compare? Oh, uh, the Twinkie Park. All right. Uh, well, let's do something more let's do common. Let's BYU. Which one's better? Yeah, like, uh, well, sure, we can do that. Bacon and burgers. Bacon better. Bacon burgers. Bacon burgers. Okay. Bacon burgers. So the, the the thing is, is we've got to determine which of these is X and which is Y, because we don't know. Okay. Um, well, think about it like this: in in a regular situation, or the amount of bacon you buy depend on the number of burgers you're going to make, or would it be the other way around? No, the burgers are depending on the bacon. All right. Yeah. So as it turns out. You have to determine how much bacon you need by the number of burgers. So this would actually be our x value. Bacon. Well, no, that it's all relative. Wait, wait. Because okay. So let's say let's say we've got uh, I don't know. You want four pieces of bacon for each burger, right? Uh, well, let's look uh, then. So if I had 12, then I should have 3, and 20, then 5, -er, and uh, 100, and 20. All right. So the first thing we need to do is determine if this table gives us a proportional relationship. So we should be able to come up with how many fractions? We will need to compare four fractions. Oh yeah, let's let's fill them in then. Okay, so it's y over x. So four over one is that equal to twelve yes. over three? Twenty over five. It's linear. Very good. These, this is not only linear, but it's proportional. Okay. But the thing is, is when we write the equation for this y equals something x, what is the slope for this equation? Well, it's just whatever these fractions are simplified. So what do they simplify to? Four. So you do. All right. Five. All right. The amount of money Robin earns while babysitting varies directly. It tells us right there that it varies directly. So we know it's straight and it goes to the origin. We just need to figure out how much she earns per hour. Listen, you don't need any of this, this garbage right here. All you need is this. Okay? All you're going to do is you're going to take 15 and divide it by 2, and that will so give you the it rate. It automatically tells you it's proportional and... Yes, it told us it was proportional. So you don't need to check all of them. No, that's... Not the, that's not important here, okay? So, because it told us it is. We've got y equals, well, this can't really be simplified, so if you wanted to just put 15 halves x, you're good. That would be your equation. All right, do a, you're gonna have problems like this on the homework. This is a word problem, right? You may, you may find, uh, what is, what are the two things we're comparing, first of all? Okay, very good. We're comparing feet and minutes in both, right? So what would our independent variable be? It would be feet. Independent. It would be feet. Well, independent is x, right? Minutes. Very good. x will represent minutes. y will represent feet. Yeah, time. It's time, so it's automatically the x value, okay? So let's split this up and just make a table. Done. All right, so after two minutes, how many feet? 1,900. Very good. After, notice here's our five minutes. So after five minutes, now how many feet? 4,750. Okay. All right, so in order to find out if the distance varies directly. So we need to find out if it actually is a direct variation. So let's find out. 1900 over 2, does this equal 4750 over 5? Yes. No. Well, this would give us, uh, what would that be, 9, 
950, 950, and this would be 950. Are they equal? Yeah. Yeah, so it is a direct variation. Uh, what is the rate? Well, this is the rate, 950 over 1, right? Well, we just need to label this. The x values are on the bottom, right? So the 1 would be represented by minutes. The y values are on top, which are represented by feet. So there's our rate. All right. This is an example in the book. Uh, graph the equation. You will need to learn. Do you guys know how to graph? Notice in B, a grocery store sells six oranges for two bucks. The cost. So is this a direct variation? Yeah, I mean, it is because it told us that it is. It varies directly with the number of oranges. And then it told us the equation as well. All you've got to do, listen, once it gives us the equation, we don't have to find the cost per orange on, with any other math. It's in the equation. So in this case, uh, cost per orange would be it's one third. Notice it gives us the rate. Which of these would be the x, cost or orange? Cost. Orange. Orange. It's y per x, right? So oranges are x. So x is on bottom, orange. And the cost was in dollars. One dollar for three oranges. All right. Now that we have that done, uh, it should be fairly easy to graph. So give that a shot. <laughs> Notice, you do have to label the x and the y axis. All right, let's look at the x axis. Uh, what will we label the x axis with? Dollars. Dollars. Yeah, we already identified the oranges were x, right? So oranges. Well, what about the y-axis? Dollars. Money. Dollars. Yeah, it's going to be dollars. You can put money there if you want, but that's a lot of writing. So what i got to do now is graph this. Uh, it told us that this is direct variation, so it automatically goes through the origin. origin. So i got a point there. Bam. Uh, and then it told us that for six oranges, I can pay two bucks. So here's six oranges, here's two bucks. So I got another point right up in here. All I've got to do now is draw a line through the two points. Let's do that. Draw a line through the two points, okay? So, no, oh, that didn't work. No, that didn't work either. No, I'm just going to draw it. Bam. That's not very Listen, when I grade your test, I'm not going to give you a ruler, so just make them as straight as you can. Also, if you miss a point, let's say, let me show you guys this, all right? This is good. It's good for you guys to know. Let's say that this is my graph. Graph. This is my axi, okay? This is the y axi, x axi. Let's say that this is my line, and it was supposed to go through this point and uh, this point. Okay? I, okay, listen, if you guys miss a point when you draw your line, here's what you're going to do. Did I miss the line? No. No. Oh, no. Because I could okay. just put a dot over the whole graph and get it right because the other dots Yeah, but here's the other thing you're going to need is labels. Oh, word. The 5-3 is how I'll know that it's meant to be right there, okay? Comparing direct variations, all we really got to worry about is the slopage. If slopage is bigger in one than the other. So on this one, uh, which one? The distance covered by the grizzly bear is shown. Which animal is faster? All you've got to do is compare the slope. So on this one, the slope is 35. This one's 30. So naturally, the rabbit is faster because he has a bigger number. Okay? I could draw the sh Most of you know that what that is. Okay? All right. So C. C. Damon's earnings for four weeks from a part-time job are shown. Assume that they vary directly, so we don't need to figure out if it's a direct variation. What we've got to do is figure out what his rate of pay is through all of these numbers, okay? It says that he could get a job that pays $7.35 per hour, but let's figure out the other one, all right? So it's 
per hour, dollars per hour, so time, of course, is x, pay is going to be y. So all you're going to do is put one of these values in. I'm choosing this one. So 6750 divided by 9, -er, what does that equal? Thank you, Grant. It equals 7.5. So it's $7.50 per one hour. Is this job going to pay more, or is this one going to pay more? The yeah, it's the 750, which was from the table, and it told us uh, that the table is from his current part-time job. So he would want to stay, or the first job pays better. Either way. All right, here's another couple examples. Sounds like this is well on the homework. It says, for example, it's it's telling you it's a direct variation, I believe, on the problem. Uh, so it's a direct variation, and it'll say if x equals, I don't know, 90 when y equals, what do you guys want? Uh, 33. Sure, 33. Okay. Then, or, or it'll say find. It'll say find x when y equals, I don't know, maybe it'll be 60. 66. Well, 66 would be too easy, right? Okay, this is what you're going to do. Is you're going to set up a proportion because these are proportion null, okay? So a proportion is just two fraction lines and an equal sign in between, like this. Oh, All right, this. yes. If you had me last year, hopefully you remember doing these. You do six times nine. So what you're going to do is we're going to take this first one, where x is 90 and y is 33. Well, y's generally go above, so we're going to put this 33 above, and the 90, which is x, goes below. On this one, though, we don't know what the value of x is, so we just put x. But we do know the y value is 60. Now, to solve a proportion like this, it's very, 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 very easy, okay? All you're going to do, and I'm going to do this at the top, okay? You're going to multiply, then you're going to divide, and that is what it will equals. This is called the fishy method, because it's very fishy, all right? What were you going to do is you're going to start at x. Start at x. You're going to go above or below it to 60, right? So I go to 60, and that's my first number that I'm going to put in, the 60. Then you cross over to 90. Cross to 90. So that's our next number, 90. And then you come around to 33. 33, and that equals x. What this does is it gives you a little fishy right here. You get a little <coughs> fishy going on up in here. He's got that and a fin and the sword for for nose. Wait, wait. So do you do do you do 90 times 60? Uh, well, maybe he does have wings. It's a fine fish. Shallow fish! No, it's a bad fish. It's a fish. <laughs> Trust me, it's going to work out for your benefit, all right? Some of you are still stressing with, uh, like, number two, right? Number two. No, no. Uh, okay, you're not the only one, all right? No. Number two is not one of the fishy ones. Let me show you guys something about number two. It gave you the equation y equals 35x. I mean, you still do have to graph, but finding the rate of change or the slope or how many miles per gallon, it's there. This is how many miles per gallon? 35. And most of you found this already. It's 35, uh, is it miles per gallon or? Yeah, miles per agla. per agla, okay? So, as it turns out, you don't even need to do 70 divided by 2. It told you what that is, right? Yeah. Yes, you do still need to graph, and you'd graph, you'd see 
Uh, you know it goes to the origin because it's a direct variation, and then you just go up to 70 and 2, graph that point, bam. Draw your line. Done. Well, you do need a label if it's not labeled as well. Mr. Schmidt, do you know who's possible?